So first of all, let me introduce uh, the story from Destel and Stella Agri. And so here we have uh, to present, we have Charles Wyeth. He is the ESD manager for Destel. And he's going to speak on, um, he's going to give us the scenario, the reasons why uh, Distel started this program, uh, why they're interested, and this was a particular opportunity for them that they really leapt at. And then he's going to introduce you to Lucas Tienison, otherwise sometimes known as Lassie, who is uh, the, the, the small, uh, was a small, uh, a more small business that started really from the inside uh, and, and part of the, his supplier called uh, Stella Agri, Stella Agri Organics. And so this is, I think I'm just going to hand over to you, Charles. You've got all the stories and uh, let's, let's, let's hear it. Thanks, Catherine, and thanks to the delegates that are present today. I think um, before we start, I must say a big thank you to Fatola, to ABSA and to the Business Day for making this competition possible. I think supplier development is such an important part of um, our economic ecosystem and especially the whole process of small business development. So certainly from my side, um, I would like to just present, um, share my screen with you and then to speak about the challenges that we face within the agricultural sector. And you touched on it a few seconds ago when you made reference to the agricultural sector, particularly commercial agriculture, being one of the most or one of the least transformed sectors in the economy. And this is a huge problem. But before I jump in there, let me just give you some background information about the stone. Um, we are a producer and marketer of fine wine, spirits and ready to drink beverages. We at this stage, we are the largest um, such company in on the African continent. Um, we are JSC listed and we're owned main, primarily by Remgro. And in 2020, our revenues exceeded just over 23 billion rand. And even though Distel was created in 2000, by the merger of Stellenbosch Farmers Winery and the Distillers Corporation, we've actually been operating since just um, since about 1925. So as a South African company, we really are committed to supporting government's economic development principles of growth, equity and employment. These are three um, items that are fundamental to our business and to our developmental um, approach that we apply across um, the value chain and through all our operations. But one of the biggest challenges we encounter is that within the wine grape farming sector in particular, the margins are extremely small and limited. Um, and what you often find in such tight um, or tough growing or operating environment, you find that sustainable farming practices are not always employed by farmers when they start facing short term challenges. And then over the last two years, the alcohol bans that um, came as a result of COVID also inflicted additional challenges on the um, farming sector. All of this creating an environment that makes transformation very difficult to implement, particularly because of those high barriers to entry in terms of the initial investment and then the waiting time before you get any return, particularly when it comes to apples, which we use in our ciders, and then of course the grapes for the wine. So what Distel started thinking about is how do we introduce some type of intervention that can leverage resources of ours as well as our big suppliers and the other farmers and um, really use that to find alternative income streams and that's where we thought of a cash supporting cash cropping um, businesses as a viable and sustainable alternative for um, to the commercial um, farming operations um, that are going on on the farms in any case. And we then started working closely with Stella Agri, which is um, a phenomenal company uh, led by Willem Rousseau and his vision of transforming one of the biggest um, commercial, um, or the biggest organic farmer of wine in the West Coast region. And he'd already implemented successful land ownership um, transformation project himself on his own farm and the adjacent farm. Um, and they also had a challenge 
to <laughs> replace the existing uh, contractor or farm manager that had been uh, employed and they wanted uh, somebody that was much more in touch with what was going on on the farm itself. Um, and the amazing thing was there that um, in addition to wanting to see further transformation in all stages of their value chain, they also wanted to support a local uh, person who had come through the ranks within the company. And what we found then that is, as the Stella Agri, as this new initiative was called, um, a new farming initiative that was started, majority black owned, um, Stella Winery was then saying, let's get this company up and running now and let's support it as fully as we could. And what had happened was from starting at a very small scale, this company grew um, from about 15 hectares to over 100 hectares within a period of two years. And I was intrigued by Patricia's comment earlier on when she made reference to the ecosystem for development. This is really what enables things in our, in the small business environment. So just jumping back to Stella Agri again and from the Stella's perspective, we wanted to see greater equity and participation of black farmers in the rural economy because it's the right thing if we wish to transform our society and our, and our sectors. And then we'd identified um, an individual and um, Stella Willem in particular came forward and said, you know, we, we all want to do this initiative. Um, we need to find the right kind of guy with the right mindset, with the right attitude, with the right vision. And um, Kenneth and Lucas was this individual that had been identified, um, who was basically a, uh, a farm laborer within their cellar environment and had shown all the right kind of attitude and the right kind of willingness to make a difference. And um, in the end, we would want to say, we want Stella Agri as this majority black and company to be a true beacon of inspiration and motivation for other farmers in the Fredendal Ebenezer area, because of course there'd been a fantastic government initiative around land, land restitution. And this was particularly something we wished to Thanks, Charles. I think, thank you for that. Uh, we haven't managed to get hold of Lucas, um, but what I am going to suggest is that I'm going to ask Elmarie, who has worked closely with him over the last um, while, to just give a summary, Elmarie, as a senior mentor yourself, a senior small business growth specialist with a background in agriculture, what particularly has stood out for you about Lassie's story? And sorry that we have to speak in his absence, but let's try and get a, let's try and get a, um, a, a sense of who he is and what was this opportunity? What did it mean to him? Thank you so much, Kathy. Yes, I was really looking forward to having Lassie on this call, especially because I would have the opportunity to speak Afrikaans, <laughs> you know. But um, I think what really stood out for me from the conversations that I've had with Lassie over the last few weeks is that he had tremendous ambition. You know, he was a laborer, but that's not where he wanted to stay. And he grabbed every opportunity to learn management skills and when, and that's the kind of thing that made him stood out. And when the opportunity came, came in, he stepped in and he said, I'll do this. And um, the other thing that, that was really, you know, kind of really stood out for me was in an, in an environment where you are a laborer and then you move up the ranks and you become a manager. It can be emotionally, it's a, it's a, it's a tremendous mindset change that you have to go through. And it's also, you know, it can be it can be difficult emotionally uh, because it's boundaries that change. And when I asked Lassie about this, I mean, he just was thinking that he was going to and tell me how difficult this was. And he just said he just got on of a, of a small business owner mindset, you know, of somebody that understands that sometimes relationships have to change so that you can grow your business and those are the things that really stood out for me the other thing of course that i was really impressed with is his ability to um you know to build a relationship with the buyers from woolworths i mean we know that woolworths is you know their whole brand is around quality and um you know the the, the reliability of their quality and especially because this is organic 
And and Lassie loves that relationship. You know, he doesn't see it as something that is intimidating. For him, it is an opportunity to show what he's really passionate about. And I think that is the reason why Woolworths continue to work with him. Thank you. Thanks, Elmarie. I see that we have actually got Lassie. Uh, Lassie um, has joined the delegate, uh, the participant panel. Are you there, Lassie? Um, you've got a last, the last few minutes uh, maybe just to just to greet and, and particularly I'll give you a little bit of time. Maybe uh, I'd like to ask you maybe one question. Uh, what what was the most uh, what was the most scary moment in being selected for this super growth uh, uh, for this group, super growth path that you're on? Yeah, the thing was was for my career. So I'm on a fun and in plus work me in the clinic beginner. Met de rentbeleider um, plaats werk en onze staan nou dan zijn bonen ten vijfde recta. Um, ja, om elke dag net op te staan en aan te pakken wat je krijgt, producten leveren waarvan je cliënt gelukkig, wat je cliënt gelukkig zal houden. Excellent, thank you so much. I mean, I think that we often, when we sit in corporate, we often only consider the concerns that we have, that we only think about our fears and risks, and often don't understand that there are fears and risks from the entrepreneur as well. I think what's important for, for, for uh, that I've understood from this case study is that Lassie, you are an unusual person because you really are motivated to succeed. And I'd be interested to know, um, what, your, you know what your vision is going into the future. Where do, you see, where do you see this whole journey of growth taking you? I had a bit more to go. Ons nou rond 50 hectare om net groter, meer klienten te werk voor ons. Zo dat ons een Pieter Mark is. En dan om ons eigen verpakking te doen voor hoe loodt. Excellent. I mean, I think that I know, um, I know many small suppliers whose dream is working for Woolworths and companies like Woolworths. Um, and when they get there, they kind of wish that they hadn't because it is such a difficult, uh, such a difficult task. It's the dream. The dream looks easy, but the reality is really huge. And so I think that what stood out um, in your case study is that you've really embraced that relationship. You're more than just a technical technical farmer, um, but that you have these abilities as a business owner and a kind of a business manager as well. And that makes you really unusual. Uh, which part of it is the most difficult for you, do you believe? Anything, Elmarie, that you'd like to, to add to, to any further questions you'd like to place? Lassie, um, your story is not so inspirational. It's so jammer, you come, you know, it's not very good time. But from all that you've learned, what was for you the die greatest lesson? And what will you say for other small businesses that also, you know, they want to start with other people outside? Om kompetent te wezen je bezigheid, hard te werk en dan elke dag net iets niets te leren. Ja, yeah, Lassie, I think you know the, the the ability to want to learn, continue to learn. I think that is the biggest, uh, you know, the biggest learning and, and the biggest lesson. Thank you, thank you, Lassie. Excellent. Thank you so much for that presentation. I mean, I think so. I'd like to open up to the room for questions. Um, but I, as a as an entrepreneur myself, the many many, many years and working with many hundreds of entrepreneurs around the country, it's very clear to me that the driving factor of success is the leader, the jockey. If you have the right person in charge with the right attitude, um, anything's possible. And I think that Lassie certainly epitomizes exactly that, that if you have the willingness to learn and you're willing to, to just go out there and, and uh, do the hard stuff, uh, success will come your way. So I think that's a beautiful um, opportunity, beautiful illustration there. I think from Distel's point of view and Stella Agri, um, yeah, it's again, it's this taking a risk, uh, seeing an opportunity, really being passionate about solving a key challenge, a key problem in the industry, this thing of our transformation. How do you create, how do you create uh, black owned businesses? How do you foster transformation? And I think it, uh, I think it takes courage to, to start from within um, and uh, and well done for the success that you've created. Uh, but maybe I'd like to pose a question to to Christian. So Christian, is there anything about this uh, about this case study that particularly stood out for you um, that you'd like to uh, comment on? Thank you, 
Thank you, Catherine. Uh, Christian from the IDC. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. You actually uh, cut me off quite uh, ahead because I was just about to ask a question. I guess my fingers were a bit slow. So well, I think the main thing that um, um, uh, caught my attention was basically uh, the the timelines, if I may say, and that, that was kind of my question uh, to to both uh, uh, Elmarie uh, and uh, Sorry about this. So my question was really, what do you think was uh, the, the time when you could feel that uh, they were ready to take that next step, uh, especially from moving from the labor environment to more of the management and the training path that they took? Mm -hmm. The reason why I want to, 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 to emphasize, and if you can come uh, think about it in your answer, is the... the, the, the Great. Thanks, Christian. Fantastic question. I'm going to ask Charles to answer that. Um, Charles, from your uh, from your ESD experience of of helping many small suppliers to grow. Thanks, Catherine. I think I just put up my hand in in an attempt to answer that question because in the case of Stella Agri, it certainly was a case of learning by doing. When you and, and Catherine was absolutely correct when she commented on the fact that um, when you produce for a company like Woolworths, quality is of absolute. Um, essence and it is fundamental to everything they do. So the first crop that was produced, the bulk of the crop was rejected um, because it didn't meet all the standards that Woolworths had. And um, fortunately then all the food was, all the, 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 the vegetables were given to the community of Ebenezer, not because it was bad, but it just wasn't that superb quality. And this is the one message that we find is Try to go for it, but then try to work with your buyer. So this was part of the beauty that, that Lucas had or Lassie had working with the Woolworths guys is that they were on farm, working on site, working with him um, and the um, other advisors on site to make sure that the next run was absolutely perfect that things were planned fully in advance so that at the end of the day, the crop would meet the necessary requirements. And this message, um, there was sort of no uh, wavering of that requirement by anybody. Um, there was quite a loss that was run, but between us and um, uh, Stella Winery, we absorbed the costs there um, and it was then into the next run that uh, we could then get the right kind of crop coming out of the right quality. Thank, thanks, Charles. I mean, I think people that don't know agriculture uh, often uh, don't understand how long it takes, how difficult it is to grow good crops um, and how long the production cycle is, um, you know. And so I think it is a particularly, uh, it's particularly, it's lots of opportunities in agriculture, but also some of these really key challenges. I want to maybe ask um, Michal, uh, Michal Pile um, if she has anything that she particularly wanted to maybe uh, ask, um, ask Lassie, just thinking about the challenges, um, you know, of, of growing from being some one of the many to kind of being the leader. I don't know if you have any questions that you wanted to ask, Michal. Thanks, Catherine. And yes, the story is quite inspiring. And one of the things that I'm passionate about is obviously uh, collaboration, which results in market access. And and yes, we have, we have uh, uh, just tell supporting them, but I'd like to know what opportunities has arisen through collaboration and networking that has resulted in further um, market access opportunities. Because like we said, we want to develop these suppliers, but more importantly, we want to grow sustainable suppliers mm -hmm. who grow at, at speed. Um, and has that, has that have you seen that yet? And what are the plans for the future in terms of market access for Dassi? If I may, um, Catherine, um, Michal, it's one of the most fundamental things to any small business is getting access to the right kind of market. And of course, if you can have the right kind of strategic partner, particularly a large corporate, corporate to help make it happen, it is immensely advantageous. So what's been happening is we've been chatting to Rhodes Food um, to create another avenue for uh, products uh, for crops from the farm. Um, and then Stella Winery, through their wine farming operations, have managed to secure a fantastic um, market for them uh, with uh, Tesco's in the UK where butternut and pumpkin seeds 
are now begin, uh, being exported into the European Union. So it's really about saying, OK, these guys have the right technical competence and experience, and then to use the um, right kind of uh, support to open up further markets. And that's really what um, we've been trying to do. And Stella, in support of Stella Agri, has been also phenomenal at doing that. Yeah, thanks, Charles. I mean, I think it is a huge success that's in the making. Then over to you, Charles, just for a wrap up comment. Thanks, Catherine. And I'll be quick this time around. And it's just to say, I mean, he's being incredibly modest um, with his responses because he's rather shy. He's very much the production kind of guy that gets out there and gets just going with things and then works beautifully with his key partners, instilling confidence in them. And that's what they did with us and with Willem uh, of, of Stella Winery. He, and, and certainly it's been the case with Woolies and now with Rhodes as well, that you've got a sense of confidence that when the commitment is made, it can be delivered on. Because our role would be just exactly as Mary has just said now, that um, we want to see, we would like to see Stella Agri starting to play a much stronger role in the wine sector, because that's even least or even less transformed than the agricultural sector in general. So um, our vision is to say, let's continue to support, to help grow and to improve the, the, the impact and so that they can really become a beacon, uh, you know, out there for other farmers as well. Love, lovely. Thank you so much, uh, Charles Wyeth uh, and Lucas Tennyson. Uh, that, as you can see, um, Worthy winners of the uh, small um, small supplier award from the ABSA Business Day Supplier Development Awards, and thank you so much for that. And I, I really, um, uh, as Mary said, we, we gain a lot of uh, inspiration from this uh, from this case study of growth. Thank you so much.